Hello again, my tubies. How are you? Do you like my new hairstyle? This is my new do, my new look. You see? You get past the narcs, the narcissists, and you move on, change your do, get a new look, and become fabulous. We're getting ready to talk again. <laughs> we are talking about narcissistic personality disorder. And I always, I feel that it's best that you hear it from a professional. What? Is a narcissist? Dr. Phil is here with us today. How's that? Yay, Dr. Phil is here with us. He is uh, with this character named Chris. Chris has started lying, he said, since he was six years old. Okay, let's listen in while he diagnosed. Is this person a narcissist? Let's listen in to see. Look, I haven't diagnosed him. It would be improper for me to do so without doing you know, complete workup and everything, but mm -hmm. I can tell you what would be on my short list of considerations. Uh, one would be narcissistic personality. Um, I mean... Now, what Dr. Phil did is this man is sitting here on the stage with his wife, and the wife explained to Dr. Phil all the things that he has put her through, all the things that she has has had to put up with, and after listening intently, Dr. Phil, like he said, he hasn't really diagnosed him yet, but from what he's hearing, and there's other people in the family on the stage, and they are confirming what the wife is saying, Dr. Phil automatically, check out the conclusion he came to. It sounds like to him, narcissistic personality disorder. Let's listen in further. I mean, take a look, see what you think, you know, Karen, see what you think. These, these folks tend to have a grandiose sense of self-importance. They want to be super. Do we agree with that? They think that they're the only ones who matter. They're the ones who are important. Nobody else is important and nobody else matter. Everybody else have to take a back seat to them. Really? <laughs> Supervisors, man. They're preoccupied with fantasies. I'm an airline pilot. Show me that house. <laughs> They have a belief of... Yeah, they have these fantasies, like my ex, he thought that he was like, uh, I'm a really hot guy, uh, yeah, um, all the women want me, yeah, I want to meet all of your women friends. Honey, I didn't want him to meet my women friends. My women friends always thought he was creepy. You know, that's why, and I tried to be proud of him or whatever, and I didn't introduce him to certain people, but there's other people I would never introduce him to. Because all the women friends that I that that I pretty much introduced him to, like um, down the road somewhere, they all thought that he was pretty creepy. How sad is that? But not in his little fantasy world. He doesn't get it. Belief of being special and unique. They require excessive admiration. They have a sense of entitlement. I don't feel guilty about it. I mean, yeah, give me give me some money. Yeah, you heard. They have a sense of entitlement. They don't feel guilty about anything. No, I can take money from women and children and whoever. I could sit up here and try to hustle you or scam you. They have no guilt. They have shame when they take time to sit down for a brief moment. Eventually, sometimes they have shame. But when it comes to guilt, hell no. And you know they don't have any guilt because if they had guilt, they, couldn't, they wouldn't be able to keep doing what they do. Let's listen more, further to Dr. Phil. With some money, they're interpersonally exploitive. They'll take advantage of everybody they have access to. They lack empathy, feel guilty. <laughs> Can we clap on that? They take advantage of everyone they come in contact with. Have you experienced that? Have you noticed that with your narc? They have no empathy like Dr. Phil is getting ready to go into. They have no empathy. I mean, because if you had empathy, there's no way, no way you could do the things that these narcs do. You could never do that and sleep at night. My narc, he slept, he slept like a, a, a freaking angel, snoring and all. That shows they have no conscience, no guilt, no nothing. Why? They have no empathy. No guilty death. They're envious of others, or they believe others are envious of them. And he was so envious of my son, of my son-in-law. 
He used to say things about my son-in-law. Yeah, you people think he's so great. You think he's so good. Yeah, but watch. Down the road, you're going to find out. He's not a goody two-shoes like all of you people think he is. My son, oh, please. That was like, oh, <laughs> envy like you've never seen envy. I mean, everybody likes my son. You know? My son is a social worker, a counselor, a therapist. So he knows a lot of people around the way. Everybody has nothing but positive beautiful things to say about my son and he couldn't stand it even bus drivers when well, my son used to catch the bus before he got his car bus drivers even to this day they're always bragging about how great lewis is lewis this lewis that i mean <laughs> but him he couldn't stand my son he couldn't stand my brother why my brother's strong my brother has a very masculine voice my brother has the body of a model he has this little skinny, dried up, raisin looking body in comparison to what my brother looked like, you know, but nobody tried to make him feel bad, but he was the most jealous and envious thing that you think of the most jealous person, the, the, the most jealous person you've ever encountered and times that a thousand times. That was him. And they show arrogant, haughty behaviors or attitudes. Bam. There you go. There you have it. I just said it would be on my short list of considerations. I mean, what do you think? Uh, does it seem to fit his personality? To the T. Okay, there you have it. His wife said that fits his personality to the T. So now he has been diagnosed. That's a narcissistic personality disorder. So you see... When you're sitting around feeling bad about yourself, about what did I do wrong? Was it me? Could I have been a better wife? Uh, maybe if I would have did this or maybe or a better husband, because this works both ways. Let's not get it twisted. You know, uh, maybe if I would have did this a little bit more. No, it had nothing to do with you at all. You did everything you were supposed to do. But when someone has a mental disorder, Hey, what can you do, baby? What can you do? You gave it your all. I hope you managed to get yourself out of the situation. And if you have to deal with them because you have children, you know, do the gray, the gray rock. You know, gray rock. That means just give them those one word answers. They ask you something. Yes. How was your day? Great. Anything going on with the kids? And if they want to do open end questions, make the answers as short as possible. Okay. You always have a choice. I love you. And we are a team. All of us empaths, people who know how to have empathy. We have our own little community. We are a, a, a family and we love being empaths. We're not ashamed of it. And you have me. Okay. So you tune into my channel. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that little notification uh, bell. So that way when I up, upload another video, you'll always be on point. You'll always uh, know when I have something new. We'll talk again. Goodbye for now.